thought Rex just memorized all the songs. Uh, let's see, I think that will stay there. Yeah, I mean, I might be from a small town, Hydro, Oklahoma, out west, but I think if you've ever heard, the only reason you're not smiling is because your wood's wet. I think that's, uh, I've never heard that before. I like that. Um, so yeah, I guess I'm supposed to give my own bio. Uh, I said I'm from Hydro, Oklahoma, a uh, really small town out west. Maybe some of you have heard it. I think, uh, Henrietta, y'all are probably too big in sports to play us. I think you're 2A or 3A, and we're just a little class A, B school. Uh, so when I came into Henrietta, the other Friday was the first time, and uh, it's like, man, this place has got everything. Like, this is great. <laughs> and uh, my fiance, Lizzie's like, where's the target at? It's not a target. Uh, she's probably getting tired of me joking about that, but I thought it was pretty good. Um, yeah, so I guess more of my bio. Um, I've lived a lot of places. I was born in Portland, Oregon. Uh, my family lived there for eight years, and uh, then somebody said, well, we got out just in time. I think maybe they're, maybe they're right. Uh, we moved to middle of nowhere, uh, northern Oklahoma, little town uh, just south of Ponca City, uh, Red Rock, Marlin. Have you ever heard of the Marlin Mansion, that area? Uh, then we moved to Hydro, and then I couldn't decide what I wanted to do for college. Uh, I just wanted to play baseball. Uh, York College in Nebraska was my only offer, so you know me being 18, I'd be like, I just want to play ball. I went up there, and I don't know if you've ever been there. There is nothing there but cornfields. It is, it is not worth it. Uh, got my prior priorities right. Realized there's got to be more to life than this, and uh, went to Oklahoma Christian for one year, and then transferred to Freed Hardeman to uh, get my Bible degree when I knew that uh, ministry is what I wanted to do. Um, I guess for my fiance Lizzie. Uh, she's a respiratory therapist, and she went to school at OCCC. Uh, she grew up, was born and raised in Oklahoma City, and uh, has gone to where I'm working now, North MacArthur Church of Christ, her whole life, and that's actually where I met her and uh, her whole family. So I guess that's enough about me. It's time to talk about God, right? Time to talk about the Word. Um, I did pick a lesson that has a lot of stories from my life, uh, stuff that I'm passionate about, so you can get to know me a little bit more as we go. Uh, but again, I do want to keep the focus on the Word of God. Um, and if I was ever going to teach just one lesson, had one chance to speak to people, for the youth this morning it was grace, but I think for a whole congregation I think it's uh, evangelism, right? You need to talk about sharing the Word, uh, having an act of faith, inviting people to church, right? Those kind of things. Um, just teaching the gospel to those that lost is one of the things I'm the most passionate about, so I really want to talk about that this morning. Um, and the reason for that is I've had some opportunity, maybe you've been here too, where you, know, you finally get someone to come to church, you finally get to have a study with someone, you're super excited, and then maybe you have one or two studies, or maybe they don't even make it to those studies, and then you have to watch them walk away and say, no, that's, that's not for me. I remember the first time that happened, I cried. And I'll never forget that. They told me that and the denomination that they were going to, they said, no, we just, we like what they teach better than what you teach. I'm like, man, but I'm teaching the truth, teaching the word, and it wasn't good enough for them. And I cried. I saw two lost souls just walk away. I'm passionate for souls. I hope that this congregation is too. Because I don't ever want that to happen again. And if you've had it happen, you know the feeling. And you don't want that to happen, right? So how do we do that better? Well, the idea I've kind of kicked around is we need to have a sticky faith, right? Uh, to where when these people come around and we have chances to evangelize and teach the word, that they stick to us, right? Or like we leave them with a little something like, man, I want to know more about that guy and his faith or that girl and how she lives her life. And actually, when I was at Fruit Harden, we had to read a book called Sticky Faith. It's partly where I got the idea from as well. And uh, in this book, just talked about how if you can leave an imprint on someone that lasts with them, it might stay with them their whole life. It may take years from now for them to come to Christ, but it can happen because of what you did in your life. You had that sticky faith that they came into contact with and took it with them. <clears throat> The best way to describe it, the approach to evangelism that I, I like, and uh, in the city they didn't get this very well, but uh, I think of like mousetraps, uh, preaching the word, having the faith like, like a mousetrap. Uh, so you have the, and if I'm 
if you guys aren't with me, that's okay. But uh, you know, you have the, the country boy mousetrap, the farm mousetrap, I call it. We got the bucket, you fill it with water, peanut butter on top. That's, is this familiar to anybody? Yeah, you guys have done that, right? Yeah. And then you hope the mouse comes up and you hope it takes some of it. But maybe it won't, you know, maybe it won't. Or maybe it gets all the way across, the, like the hole in the middle, right? It's across. So he just, they just come and take what they want and really it just depends if the, you're offering what they're interested in, right? There's that approach. And I think relating to the gospel, we preach and we teach and we talk to them. And well, it just doesn't fit their needs and they go on, right? And we kind of miss out on it. Uh, then there's the more traditional, the metal, right? One to slap the one shot and maybe we get it, maybe we don't. Um, think about that in terms of teaching the gospel, right? Maybe we try one time and they get away from it. Then there's the sticky one, right? The sticky pad, where when they get it, they're stuck. They're not going anywhere. And if they do manage to get away, just like when you like step in a gum or something, you, you're taking that with you. Right? Stays with you. That's the kind of faith I want to have. The kind of faith I think you want to have. And I think it's effective. I think it brings others to Christ. <clears throat> so, my first point today is how do we develop our faith to a point where it is sticky, right? Where it attracts people where it rubs off on them. In Mark 12, 30, Jesus says, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, and all your soul, and with all your mind. I think that's a good place to start. We have to love God. We have to have a strong relationship with Him. Um, I know we have multiple generations here t- today, and I know that I'm not married, but I always think of my relationship with God very much like a physical relationship, like with your spouse, as far as how it develops. Uh, which I think fits because we're even called to be the bride of Christ, correct? Right? <clears throat> but when you first start spending time with your spouse or uh, the person you ended up marrying, or maybe you're not there yet, maybe you're dating someone right now, you normally didn't just meet them out of the blue, unless I know kids these days, they got, you know, snap face and uh, uh, some of the others that maybe aren't as appropriate. But, you know, typically, you meet your future spouse or the person you're dating because you've been around them with other people, right? You've been introduced to them by a common friend, or maybe, you know, hopefully the, the ideal situation, right, is, well, you met them at church. Maybe you met them somewhere else. It may be a ball game, right? But there was other people around. Well, when you're first becoming a Christian, you probably got introduced to God, Introduced to Jesus Christ through other people. Right? Well, then from there, you like it. You're like, man, this is going really good. Like, and I kind of want to ask a girl out. Oh, maybe I hope that boy, I uh, hope he's interested in me, right? I want to have some more time alone. Well, now you've developed your faith. You've developed your relationship, your love for God to the point where, man, now I want to study. Just give me a couple people. I want to be in class. I want to grow my relationship that way. Then it continues to develop, and you want more time alone. You want more time to see you and God, you and your spouse, right? Are you guys with me on this illustration of making the connection, right? You want more time alone with him. Doesn't it take a while if in your faith? Didn't it take a while to get to the point where you study your Bible on your own? Didn't it take a while to get to the point where you're praying every day? It takes time to build up that point. And then hopefully you've entered into a covenant relationship with him through baptism. And at that point, again, the equivalent is you've married the person that you want to spend your whole life with. You've grown a relationship from start to finish through the love that you have for God and to the place where you want to be baptized and commit your whole life to him, enter into that covenant, serve him the rest of your life. And once that happens... You can't be separated. There's nothing that can, Romans chapter 8 says, nothing can separate us from the love of God. <clears throat> we have to acknowledge the first step in reaching those outside the church is growing our own love to our Father, developing that sticky faith with Him, in Him. Well, the second thing is, what does this look like, right? How does this look like in my life 
I've developed the love, I've developed, I've entered into that covenant with him, I'm baptized, I'm ready. But what traits do people need to see in me for me to be effective, for me to reach them? I think the first is honesty. They need to know that our faith is honest because honesty, I think, through your actions can speak louder than your words. <clears throat> this is not just you know, telling the truth. This is also teaching the truths that we find in Scripture. Uh, if people want to hear the gospel and respond to it, I think sometimes we get in the habit of maybe sugarcoating or you get so tired of getting told no that you try to change maybe how you present it. Maybe you try to soften it. And maybe sometimes that works. Ultimately, we've got to teach the truth. We have to know it first, spend time on our own study. We have to teach the truth with full honesty. Let me read John chapter 8, verse 31 for 36 to you. To you. The Jesus says to the Jews who believed him, If you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. They answered him, We are Abraham's descendants, and have been in bondage to anyone. How can you say you will be made free? Jesus answered them, Most assuredly I say to you, whoever commits sin is a slave of sin. And a slave does not abide in the house forever, but a son abides forever. Therefore, if the Son makes you free, you shall be free indeed. Honesty is abiding in the words of Christ that are the truth and teaching that same truth to others so that they may be free from sin, just like we are free from sin. There is no sugarcoating the gospel, the truth of Christ. There is no watering it down. Because that's what the world does, right? They try to take away from the truth, make it easier, make it more convenient, conform it to them, they try to conform God and the church to what they want instead of conforming their life to what God wants. We can't evangelize. We can't have a sticky faith that way with that mindset. Mark 2.17 says that Jesus didn't come to those who are well, but to those who are sick. He's not calling the righteous. He's calling the sinners. <clears throat> teach the truth to the sinners, but teach it in love. Have genuine concern for the souls you're saving. And I didn't know I had so much genuine concern. And again, I think you've been here too. Then when I saw those people walk away, oh man, that hurt. Them walking out of my life after I tried to teach them, basically felt like we were standing in front of heaven's gates. And they just said, I'm good. I'll go somewhere else. We have to have honesty in what we teach. We can't hold back. We have to be realistic and open about the consequences of walking away from those pearly gates, walking away from Jesus Christ. And we don't want to scare people into it. We don't want to guilt trip them. Well, people got to know the truth. If you don't live your life in the way that God has designed for you to live it, it won't go well. So be honest with your faith. Show honesty to others. The second thing our faith needs is integrity. After they've heard our faith, after we've been honest about the truth, our actions got to line up with what we say. <clears throat> I think it's a lot easier to hide um, a lack of integrity if you struggle with that. It's a lot easier to hide it from the people you see just at 9 a.m., 10 a.m., Sunday morning. And maybe you see him again Wednesday night. But it's a whole lot harder to hide a lack of integrity for those you see from 9 to 5, Monday through Friday. They know you. They see you longer. You can even say your family, right? Your family knows you. They can see if you're really living out your faith or not, if you have that integrity. <clears throat> Sometimes I think we get in the rut or we get in the bad habit of we put on our best face from 9 to 11 a.m. Sunday. Uh, I've been places like that. I, I don't think y'all are that way. I don't get that feeling at all. Uh, but you know, like, I just, man, I gotta have a good week so I can present and I can be good and I can be dressed nice and put my best face forward at 9 a.m. Sunday morning, do worship, and maybe again Wednesday night. But in between there, oh, it doesn't matter. It's okay. The people that uh, are in the church with it, they, they might not see me. That's the wrong attitude to have. The people that you're going to have the biggest impact on 
are those people that you see 9 to 5, Monday through Friday. Those people that are outside of the church, those that you see at your kids' ball games. But maybe if you're uh, playing ball yourself or you have, uh, if you're involved in arts or music, those classmates, those teammates, that's where you make your impact, is every day having integrity in your faith. <clears throat> the third thing is vulnerability. I, I'm not going to go too long. Uh, maybe some of you are like, man, he already needs to wrap it up. Right? I don't like to be long-winded. Uh, somebody, when I came up here, said, keep it 15 minutes or so. Okay. I'm going to be a little short, a little longer than that. Uh, the third thing is to have vulnerability about our weaknesses and our imperfections and our struggles. I've heard that some people, and I've heard this directly said in my face, is I don't feel like I belong at church. I don't think I'm supposed to be a Christian because I look at all them and they have it all together. Reality, is that true? Do we have it all together? No. We talked about that in the youth class this morning. Talked about, yes, you know, I made all these mistakes in my past, and then I'm baptized or I become a Christian, and all that's forgiven. But the requirement is not to have perfection the rest of your life, right? You will sin after this point. You will make a mistake. You will fall short. Well, you can try to hide that. Or you can be open and honest about it. I think we're called to be open and honest about it. What we struggle with. What's getting to us. What may be this temptation. Man, I don't deal with that very well. I need help. If we're not vulnerable with the people that we're trying to reach, they may think we're too good for them. They may not be able to relate. Like I said, I had someone say this to my face. They said, I just don't fit in there. Well, why? I just all just, just got it together. And I don't. I can't go in that building. Church isn't the building. Church is the people. The people struggle. But as the people, we belong to God. We're His. We are imperfect humans daily being made perfect through Christ Jesus, His love, His grace. Be open about your struggles. You'd be surprised that vulnerability, how far it goes with some people. <clears throat> And then through those, right, we grow our faith through trials, through temptations, through failures. 1 Peter 1, 7 says that the testing of our faith has been made more valuable than gold. And our faith through trials results in glory and honor to Christ Jesus. I believe the verse is that Jesus didn't come to save those who are healthy, he came to save those who are sick, who are spiritually sick. If none of us are spiritually sick, he didn't need to come. But I think he did. I think we're glad that he's here, that he did what he did for us. <clears throat> so we need to have honesty in our faith. We need to have integrity. Be willing to be vulnerable. That's how we bring others to Christ. So we have that stickiness, right, that the people can latch on to, they can relate to. And when they see that in us and they leave, it's going to stay with them. But there's also two nevers. There's two things that we should never do when it comes to evangelism. I think the first is to never give anything less than your best effort. Colossians 3.23 says that whatever you do, work heartily for the Lord and not for men. When we don't give our best, when we slack in our work and in our effort, does that attract people to Christ or does that repel him? It repels it. Always give your best. Not just in those efforts, speaking of those who need the gospel, but just your day-to-day -day task. If there's, you know, if we have a, if you have a day job, nine to five, or uh, I was talking to Buck, you guys have the ranch, right? For the cattle. If it's obvious that you're not putting the effort into your cattle, and they're not putting out, you're not putting out a good of product, right? It's going to be a whole lot harder Convince people to come first so they can see, well, he's, he's not even good at, I don't know you. No. He, he's not even good at taking care of his cows. How can he take care of his life, right? How can he take care of me spiritually? It matters. You may not think it does, it does. It matters. Uh, when I was playing ball, I learned that if I slacked, if I took off on my running or, uh, you know, didn't, uh, didn't put in the extra swings, the extra, play extra catch, catch, I was a catcher, extra bullpens. People didn't want to be around me. What I said didn't matter. 
do your best for Christ like you're working for God in everything that you do, you'll be surprised how effective your message is. <clears throat> well, the second thing is never rule out an opportunity no matter how small. That's the second thing. Never look at a situation and say, well, I, I don't need to go to that or I, I don't think I really need to talk to that person. It'll be okay. Right? Like, in the 10 seconds I'll have with them, it may not make a difference anyways. And I kind of thought that myself. For a while, I was like, well, I'm just going to wait for the big, perfect opportunity when someone asks me to come teach or speak or, you know, I get to do a uh, free hard and we had chapel. So I'll just wait for the big chapel and I'll speak and that's my opportunity. Don't rule out the small, daily, insignificant, insignificant interactions with people because you may have a lasting impact. Uh, I remember a couple months ago now, Lizzie and I went and got breakfast at this place in Oklahoma City. Uh, it was a little, not for people of our kind, country people, they didn't have any meat in the breakfast. Uh, it was all veggies and healthy, and it was like vegan stuff, and she talked me into it. And, it was, um, and I remember going there, I'm like, too much, uh, Order the breakfast sandwich and there was more green than egg, you know what I mean? Uh, wasn't a fan. But while we were sitting at the table, uh, I got a call from a friend at Freed Hardeman who was, and maybe you guys know these names. You heard a, a Ralph Gilmore, Adele Jenkins, those familiar. Okay, they're pre well known preachers in Tennessee. I, I didn't expect people to know, but sometimes people do. Uh, and they were golfing together, and he called me, and I put it on speakerphone, and he said, uh, they, they said, uh, my friend Harris is who they're talking to. They said, who started that Devo for the baseball? They both my friend Dane did. Like, man, that's going really good. And these preachers were saying, like, man, we'd like to know more about that. Like, what is he doing working? So Harris called me as we were eating and uh, put on speakerphone. And while we're talking about how we develop this devotional on Monday nights for athletes at Free Heart Event, the waitress stopped and said, you minister, like I am. I said, well, where at? I said, North MacArthur. She said, I know somebody. She went and she went off talking about how she's a part of that recovery group and how that congregation, she doesn't go there, but it helped her so much, made a difference in her life. She just wanted to talk Bible with us the whole time instead of working, right? So doing her job. And then as we were about to leave, not just our waitress, but the table across from us, the table on the other side, and the table behind us, we're all talking about the Bible. It was open. I didn't, you know, hush. Sometimes, you know, we get a call and we're like, oh, just hush, hush. There's no one here. Put it on speakerphone. It's all good, right? Never rule out an opportunity, no matter how small. You never know the reach of your impact. How about this? You never know the sticking up, your, stickiness of your faith. If you're really sticky, if you really love the Lord and it shows, we have those three traits we talked about. You might grab people, leave an impact on people that you don't even, you didn't even realize that you did until way later. <clears throat> so as we wrap it up, morning, have a contagious faith. Never miss an opportunity. Never rely on anything is too small. Never give anything less than your best. Let your faith show. Don't be afraid to hide it, to show it, right? Think of that song, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine, right? We sing that to kids, but man, is that true, right? What's the next line? Don't let Satan blow it out, right? Hide under a bush. Don't do that. Let it shine. Let it show in the workplace, to your family, to the community, to the school, wherever you are, be a light to the world. And maybe you can bring others to Christ that way. Uh, this morning, if you think your faith needs to be strengthened, you need your love for God renewed, if you need help with anything that we talked about, we'd love to receive you. We'd love to talk with you. And if you've never become a Christian, this is the time. If you realize, man, I've been studying or... I'm convicted, and I want, I want to be like that. I want to bring others 
Jesus Christ. And you're ready to be baptized this morning. We'd love to study with you and talk to you about that. It's been great to be here. It's been great to get to meet all of you. And it's just been a, a privilege and honor to have this morning to speak. And uh, I look forward to meeting all of you later today, whether that's at the, the fellowship hall or just in the hall as we're talking. Right? Um, yes, if you need anything this morning, once you come as we stand, as we sing.